Welcome to the Weekly Report. I'm Colleen Doctorian with City Communications. Here are the top three things you should know this week. The average Kansas City life expectancy is 77 years. But did you know your life expectancy or how long you live varies greatly depending on the zip code you live in? Kansas City Health Commission's CHIP Planning Committee is working to make those numbers more even by improving public health, addressing housing issues, and violence prevention. My name is Angela Pearson. I'm aide to Councilwoman Raina Park Shaw. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. This press conference is about the CHIP plan, the Community Health Improvement Plan that the KC uh, Health Commission has passed and was adopted by a council yesterday. It is not acceptable, not acceptable, that there's a life expectancy difference of up to more than 18 years now. We've gone the wrong way since I came in office. It was 16, I think, when I first decided to run. We're 18 years different and the life expectancy issue between white and black and brown communities. We know that it's not enough to focus on the downstream outcomes like chronic disease or access to services. We need to assess the way our community institutions are functioning and making decisions instead of placing the burden of health on the community and its members. And in, in order to affect meaningful change, we must address the, this public health crisis. When racism is present, health cannot exist. So why do people die early? Because of disease and injury. Why that? Because of various risk factors. Why that? Because of the neighborhoods and the situations and the social environments they're growing up in. Why are those like that? Because of policy decisions that have been made in the past and are carried forward now. Why that? Because of the isms racism and so forth. So until we get all the way back to the root causes, we can put band-aids on problems, but we can't really resolve them. This is not about us working independently, either us or the Health Commission. We can't do this work alone. Um, you know, our ability to impact education is limited. Our ability to impact housing is limited. Um, we have to work with community partners. This has to be a community health improvement plan. We're excited about this. We think the timing's right. People have become aware of this, and now they're looking for solutions and action. KCMO City employees' commitment to residents doesn't stop at the end of the workday. They saw a need and decided to step up by creating KC Kindness. In partnership with Harvesters, they distribute food, personal items, diapers, and more on a first-come, first-served basis. The next event will be held on June 19th at the Mohart Center from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if you're in need of rental assistance, the city's rental assistance program still has funding available. Check out this video. Today we're announcing that the city of Kansas City, Missouri will be appropriating $4.5 million, $4.5 million to support rental assistance throughout our community. Yes. This is to make sure, thank you, I agree, yes. I agree. We are working with organizations throughout our city to make sure that that money gets to families and children and so many who need it most. To apply for these funds, any Kansas Cityan, you can always call us. You can always go to 311, call us, look for resources. But a lot of people don't like to call anymore, particularly sometimes the younger they get. So we've set up a website. It is kcmo.gov slash rent help. Again, that's kcmo.gov slash rent help. And our goal is very simple to make sure that everybody who's in need during this time has an opportunity long before you're talking about homelessness, long before you're talking about evictions, long before you're talking about so many of the other challenges we have. We want to make sure people have a place that they can stay. So this is what we're working on, right? It's KCMO Rental Assistance, and these are all of the resources that we have with the city. And we're working with some important organizations, and this board actually helps me remember it. I could talk about this for a long time because I think at the core, this is what local government should do. Don't forget, City Hall will be closed for Memorial Day, Monday, May 31st. Therefore, your trash and recycling will be delayed one day all week. Monday routes will be collected Tuesday, Tuesday on Wednesday, and so on. Friday, trash and recycling will be picked up on Saturday. For additional information on the City's trash holiday schedule, go to kcmo.gov trash. 
The weather's warming up and hopefully the rain is going away and KC Parks has beautiful facilities for you to spend some time this summer. Five outstanding golf courses are available and open seven days a week. From Swope Memorial Golf Course that was opened in the 1930s to Shoal Creek Golf Course which is rated number one according to golfadvisor.com. Check out this video about it. My name is Craig Martin. I'm the Class A PGA professional and general manager of Heart of America Golf. This course was built for beginning type golfers or just the average Joe to come out and play. We have three facilities on our property. We have the river course, which is a par 35, nine hole course, a lot of trees. You can make double bogey by hitting the junk, but you can also make some birdies. So it's kind of fun for that average guy to come out and play. And it's great for ladies, for juniors, you know, all sorts of people come out and work on their game on this course. We also have a nine hole par three course that the kids love to play. And then we also have a three hole course called The Hill, a place where the first tee does their programming. And we send beginning golfers up there. The kids really love to play there. It's a good place for them to cut their teeth and learn how to play. We also added the foot golf course about a year and a half ago, where that's basically you just kick a soccer ball into a 21 inch cup and uh, the, the soccer community really loves it. Uh, we have a lot of team building events, birthday parties, uh, corporate groups get together and come out and play. It's a little bit easier to do than strike a golf ball, so it's a fun thing for everybody to come out and try, and it, it's, it's been a lot of fun. We're kind of a hidden gem right here in the Kansas City metro area. We are in Swope Park. We're right around the corner from the zoo entrance, the Starlight entrance, the Nature Center. You can see part of our golf course from Gregory Boulevard. We're between 71 Highway and 435, just off the Grandview Triangle. And so we're not that far away. Just a real nice place for everybody to come work on their game. And it's, it's kind of unique. The nine hole par three, a nine hole par 35. Three holes dedicated to kids and teaching them how to play golf. I'm out at lunchtime and hit driving range balls. Uh, after work, sneak it in a quick nine. There's no place else like it in town. Thanks for watching the weekly report. I'm Colleen Doctorian with City Communications. Stay tuned for more great city videos, including one about KCFD's community paramedic program and how they're helping vaccinate Casey residents for COVID-19.
My name is Rashida Phillips. I'm the executive director here at the American Jazz Museum. I want to welcome you all here to the museums at 18th and Vine. We share this building with our Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, very proud here in the third district of Kansas City, Missouri, to represent a beautiful uh, feature of our city, a beautiful cultural, historical landmark and neighborhood. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. It is my sincere pleasure to welcome our wonderful Mayor Quentin Lucas to the microphone. We are delighted to have the Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development here in Kansas City. She has not been traveling that long in this administration. Just now, they're getting back out into the cities of our country, and we are so honored that Congressman Cleaver, that so many of us are able to welcome her here to see the work that we are doing, the plans that we have ahead, and all of the important issues relating to housing, housing as infrastructure, housing as public safety, housing as the future of Kansas City. We are in a lot of trouble uh, in this country for a lot of reasons. Uh, one of them uh, is that, w that the, we don't have enough uh, affordable housing. And that that's one of the reasons I, I was uh, thrilled when uh, the president named uh, Marsha Fudge as, as the HUD secretary, uh, because it's something that she uh, understands uh, quite clearly. And uh, we are also trying to uh, get that embedded into the minds of members of Congress. I was fortunate that the President asked me to meet uh, with him and, and uh, four members of the other party and three other uh, mayors uh, to talk about housing at his first meeting when he began to work on this $1.5 trillion package. It was uh, a, a good meeting. Uh, obviously, I argued that uh, housing uh, is inseparable uh, from uh, anything else that we need to do in, in, in the country. If we need to build roads and bridge, which we, uh, bridges, which we need to do. Uh, we also need to create affordable housing. Uh, it is one of the, the, the biggest problems in this country right now, affordable housing. Let me just say this, we are, all these people advance on, most of you for a year have been working from your homes, those of you who have homes. Your kids are going to school from their homes, those who have homes. If housing is not infrastructure, I'm not sure what is. <laughs> They're questioning already what, whether broadband is infrastructure. Ten years ago, they would not have thought it would be. But what we have now is a president that is not looking backward, he is looking forward. And so if we thought the way that people think that say housing is not infrastructure, we probably never would have sent a man to the moon. We would not have the medical breakthroughs we have had. We wouldn't be talking about electric vehicles if we kept thinking about things the old way. It is time for us to look forward and not look backwards. And so it is the president's vision that we would make housing a staple, a foundation in our country. We're the only industrialized nation in the world that still lets children live in places with lead paint. We're the only nation in the world that does not take care of the citizens who need our help. And so it is my responsibility and my directive from the president to talk to you today about how we're going to make things better. I want to talk to you just briefly about the American Jobs Plan, where the president has recommended that we spend more than $200 billion in creating, rehabilitating, and um, bringing up to code housing across this country, some new, about $40 billion of it to rehabilitate public housing. Uh, but we do know two things, and Mayor, this is what I'm especially proud of that you've been doing, is taking care of homeless people. Mm. There are $10 billion in the plan that we already have that is going to address homelessness. But our problem is there are not enough places to put people. We don't have enough affordable housing, low-income housing. We're getting ready to take care of that. Because if we don't, then there are so many people in this country who will never have a foundation. And for me, a foundation is infrastructure. 